You can have as many customer calls as you want. If you don't know how to inspire people, you're not going to close. Demos are just one of many ways you can get your prospects attention. Since starting my sales career, I've given over a thousand demos of highly technical products because I was raised to always do a demo, always do a demo, always do a demo, which was the mantra of all sales managers at the company. And while that's not the best approach, I'll get into when and how you should run demos if you want to increase your conversions and deal size. By the end of this video, you will have a framework that you can apply to your own product and make your demo stand out. Let's get started. First of all, there is no such thing as a universal demo. To get results, it has to be tailored to the person you're showing it to, to their needs, and where they are in the sales cycle. The goal can either be to inspire, commit, or enable them. If your goal is to get the prospect on the discovery call, you will need them to be interested, and so it's your job to inspire them to take action and leave the status quo behind. Not an easy feat, and you also don't have much time because at this stage, the prospect does not have a real reason to trust you yet. For this reason, you should keep these demos short and sweet. Once you're past discovery, the goal changes. You will want them to commit to giving your product a try. This requires a whole different approach. You want them to feel like the status quo is no longer acceptable and that starts by connecting pain and impact. There's a whole video of me explaining how to do this during discovery, so be sure to check it out after this one. Link will be in the description below. By the end of this demo, they should confirm that you've understood what they want to accomplish and have them move to the next stage. And when you're ready to kick off a POC, you want to make sure that the folks are set up for success by guiding them through step by step on what they will need to do and how. No, this isn't the same as a POC kickoff or checking in on their progress. This is a precursor that has to finish with them having a clear picture and a agreeing to a mutual action plan or map for short. Without a map, you're leaving the POC to fate. Now, before I break down the structure, let's talk about some major mistakes to avoid. Where most people go wrong is thinking that a demo is show and tell, so they end up doing all the talking, and this cannot be further from the truth. A demo is a tool that gets your buyer engaged and to open up about insights that get you closer to winning the deal. These same people are prone to feature slapping, which is cramming as much functionality as possible into the time frame, thinking that the more the product is capable of, the more valuable it will seem to the prospect. Now, little do they know that because of this, the prospect will start asking for discounts because now they perceive they won't even use half the features your product has. Another common mistake is thinking that your prospect will care just as much about the tech as you do and so you get too technical and bore them to death. The thing is, the majority of people only care about the potential impact your product will have on their lives, so keep the demo short and sweet. A similar mistake is being generic instead of personalizing, which tends to happen when reps don't prepare ahead of time. To be the best, you have to tailor your demo to your audience and pick out the top three, max five features that will drive impact for them. If there are multiple stakeholders, consider separate demo calls because counterintuitively, inviting too many buyers will kill your discovery. Thing is, people are afraid they might look dumb in front of their peers, and I get it, and so they will avoid asking questions they feel they should already know the answer to. This leaves you in the dark about what matters to them. Instead, split up the calls into multiple demo sessions for each persona and tailor your demo session to their specific needs. In doing so, you'll seem more relevant, which will increase your win rates. Now let's see how the demo structure should look like. Chances are this is the first time your prospect will see your product, ever. So think back to the last time you did something for the first time. I bet you had to wrap your head around what is even happening and then figure out how to do it. And that's exactly how we're going to run the demo. Essentially, you want to set the stage, what are we seeing here, mention what we will do here and why should they care, and then show them how it's done. And then you close. Repeat this for each feature. If you stick around till the end, you'll see me do this in action. Once you get the hang of running demos, you can make them even better using techniques to engage your prospect and increase impact. To list five basic ones, you can use customer stories to grab their attention and make them interested in how others achieve similar results. You should definitely keep it to the point and avoid filler words. You can play with pace to increase excitement and use effective pauses when you want to give them room to digest what you said. You can use contrasting, which is essentially comparing what you're showing directly to how it looks when using the status quo. And lastly, engage with questions after each section to keep their attention up. Excited to see what this looks like in action? I'm going to demo the Bitrise platform, which is a developer tool used to streamline mobile app development. I'm going to show an inspirational demo to a principal iOS engineer at an enterprise company because my goal is landing an in-depth discovery call. This persona cares about the productivity of the team, especially around distributing knowledge so they can run a sustainable business even if a senior leaves. They care about tooling that scales so they can stay competitive while keeping budgets in check. And they care about future-proofing the tech stack because changing suppliers is expensive. 
life, both in terms of loss of productivity, cost of migration, and opportunity cost of time spent on making the change. Let's go. When I talk to principal engineers, their priorities typically revolve around team productivity, performance and scale, and building a future-proof architecture. So I'm going to give you a brief overview of how Bitrise addresses these areas, and then you can tell me if this is something that aligns with your goals. How does that sound? I was talking to Ben, who's the mobile tech lead at Rocketship. Ben created all of their build processes from scratch using scripts, and only he knew how they worked. So naturally, when things broke, he was left with support and maintenance. Now, Ben needed a robust enough solution that met their needs, yet easy enough to use that anyone can take ownership. I'll show you how we solved this for him. This is what you see when you log into your Bitrise account. You'll see your past builds on the left and your existing apps on the right. From here, I'll show you how you can add a new application and kick off your first build in under a minute. With other platforms, this can take up to a week because you have to figure out how the platform logic works. But Bitrise guides you, guides you through step-by-step -step on how to add a new app and create sample workflows for you so you already have a base to work with. So let's see this in action. I'm going to add a private application uh, with this repository, add an SSH key and run a build on my master branch. From here, the project scanner is trying to figure out what type of application it is that I'm trying to add and it will customize the sample workflows that I talked about so that it is actually a good base to start off with. And this shouldn't take more than a couple of seconds. There we go. It figured out that this is an iOS application. I'm going to add a distribution method and uh, for the rest I'm going to just skip for now. And uh, there we go, we've kicked off our first build. Now this will take a couple of minutes, so let's check out an app that I have added already. We're now in the workflow editor, and as you can see, it has a nice and simple GUI that anyone can learn to use in a matter of minutes and design your build process. Simply drag and drop steps to meet your process and choose from over 300 integrations out of the box that normally you'd have to create and maintain yourself. Simple as that. So far, how does this compare to what you have in place right now? Okay, so when Adam from Big Corp came to us, their builds were running on Mac minis on-premise and they had limited capacity to run a huge number of UI tests. This was taking days to execute. And when things broke, they had to start from scratch. This long feedback loop meant that they could only, only release monthly. Fast forward to today and they're releasing weekly with confidence. Let me show you how. We're now in the Stacks and Machine tab, where you can configure performance. Scale is something that you never have to worry about at Bitrise because you always have access to just the right amount of resources while actually paying for only what you use. We actually encourage you to run as much of your processes in parallel as you can. As for performance, just choose um, more powerful machines when you need faster response times and slower machines when Time doesn't matter, like for nightly builds. This way you can manage productivity and budget alike. How are you solving the challenge of uh, scaling versus overspending currently? All right, and lastly, since you'll need a solution that's future-proof, I'll call out that Bitrise is open source and compatible with any third-party tool that you are working with as long as they have a public API. Just select the action that you want to take and control Bitrise from there, or create your own step and make it part of your workflows to use there. Based on what you've seen so far, how does this stack up to what you have in place right now? And that's how it's done. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and check out some of my other content which will appear here and here. See you next week.